You have a light that's right in between us. You had to wear a hat today, Rachel. Yeah, I had to wear a hat and today. So, and so now we have a light. I cannot see your face. <laughs> so we might as well just talk without, like, it doesn't matter how, many, how much you move. It's right at your face level. It really is. So I can't see it, but that's fine. Um, because Rachel needs to be a hat girl today. Uh, <laughs> I'm in my hat girl era. Stop. Po- you can't poke <laughs> around the light, too. It's it's. Yeah, you're OK. The, the pains we go to to accommodate Rachel's hat girl era. It's crazy. All right. I'm um, going to be wearing a hat every single show until my hair grows out properly. <laughs> so we're going to deal with this. Well, I'm we're going to we're going to have a solution here. Okay. We're, we're testing out. If you haven't noticed, the cameras have been a little finicky of late. And so we're testing out some new settings. And as part of that. The light basically has to shine directly on my face. Did I didn't listen to the episode? Did Connor leave out or leave it? Did he take out or did he leave in the part where the camera died right at like the last minute and you like basically lost your shit? No, he episode? cut that out. That, I would have. I would have actually preferred if he kept that in. That's very funny. Oh my god! Um, yeah, just like the trials and tribulations of like trying to get stuff up. But I know it's crazy. We're on our way to new mics. We're gonna have yeah. new lights at some point. Yeah, they're replacing me. They're getting a new mic, um, so it's gonna be it's gonna be great. Um, all right, we have to talk about Alex Morello and his stupid fucking hockey team uh, quick. Um, but before we do that, let's talk about hockey that actually matters, which yeah. is uh, the Women's World Championships. Canada. If it seems like every time they play, there's a golden goal situation. Like there's like there is it it's it comes down to the wire, and as always, Team Canada. Salute, uh, salute our troops. They they pull it out. They win six five in OT to win the women's worlds. Huge stuff. Obviously, uh, Marie Philippe Poulin scoring twice. Um, it's just incredible stuff. She also missed like a breakaway really early in OT, and it's like imagine score. First of all, missing almost the entire tournament with injury, and then coming back and scoring a hat trick, including the OT winner. Like that is just that would be the most Marie Philippe Poulin thing ever. Um, but she didn't end up scoring. And then the Americans took a too many men penalty. That was too many. What? Too many players on the ice. It's fucking the rule book says too many men. I don't care. Um, and bad feminist, Rachel, Rachel Dory. Yeah. I, I'm not in on all that stuff. I don't, I don't care enough. Rachel Dory believes that the woke mind virus (laughs) has infiltrated hockey. Uh, no. Yeah. It's, it, it was pretty nuts. And then, so the the U.S. takes that penalty, and within I think it was like with like eight or so seconds left in the penalty, Danielle Sardakny, who's a mm. younger player who's kind of coming up. I hadn't really heard of her. Um, exactly. This yeah. is sort of her like first coming out big party. shot with with the team. Mm-hmm. Um, Alice Shelton pulled a goal off the goal line probably like two minutes before the end of the third period. But yeah, OT winner. This was one of the best hockey games in a long time. Caroline Harvey, who's a defenseman for the Americans, she's only 21. She is going to be so, so dominant for the next, like, 15 years. She's already arguably their best defenseman, and she had a hell of a game yesterday. But I think generally speaking, and the thing I wanted to touch on was, like, now that the PWHL is playing and you have players from – a ton of different nationalities. You got Mm -hmm. Switzerland, you got Germany, Finland, everything like that. Because these women are able to play against each other, naturally they're going to improve. So I wonder if sort of, I don't think it's going to happen immediately, but like I could see in five years, we may not have that Canada U S always situation. Like I think we're sort of on the precipice because of the league that we're going to have better developed players from other countries. And it's going to elevate the play of the women's world's, to the point where we don't just have Canada, U.S. What I think is absolutely wild, in a good way, is that the NHL, like they had, they you know they wrung their hands for so long about breaking midseason for the Olympics, and how we can't do that. <laughs> we can't take two, three weeks off in the middle of the season. Oh, it's too too much of a hassle. Oh, it'll ruin it. The like the PWHL playoffs start like right after. Like, the, it, imagine if the league like right now is basically like the, the, the end of the season, like where, where the, on the timeline or we're on, on the schedule we are right now is like the end of the season is basically done. Right. And every other league can you stops. imagine, 
can, to, to send their players to the world. Can like you the imagine NHL. if the NHL was like now we're gearing up for the playoff race, like where seedings are set and everything like that. The NHL was like, whoop, let's stop. Let's take three weeks off or two weeks off. Send our players across across uh, the country or, or overseas. They're not overseas in this one, obviously. But like, let's send them to, to a big tournament where they can play each other and everything. And then we go into the playoffs. It's wild. I think it's crazy. So yeah, think about, I mean, theoretically, you could do that. You just can't have an 82-game season. And well, the owners just, just I would say think it. about that next time the NHL goes, oh, I don't know if we can go to the Olympics. Uh, yeah, or, like, shut the, the hell NHL, up. Yes, stop you can. Thing. Um, yeah, no, pretty, it's pretty fantastic. Uh, it, it's, always, it's always a great game when Canada and USA play each other in, in, in any type of women's hockey, any championship, any format. It's always good. The big names always come to the top. Um, they always show out. And what's great is that the big names did show out here, but like you said, with Carolyn Harvey, with uh, Danielle Sard- uh, Sardaki, Sardakni? Sardakni. Sardakni. It's a hard name to say. It took me like four times. Like the, like the good young players are, are coming in too. Like there's another generation that's coming, which is fantastic. All right, Rachel. We got to talk. And we're going to we're gonna keep it as brief as we can here because obviously the news doesn't mean official yet. So we'll dive into it a bit they deeper. They would like it to be official by Saturday. Yeah, before Saturday. Like, I had heard, or, or not I, like everyone had heard that the uh, the date that they were likely looking for was Wednesday, April 17th. Um, but clearly this is a very nuanced and difficult situation. Like when it comes to just legalese, the whole reason. Get ready to learn legalese, legalese buddy. buddy. But the whole reason why this is, the NHL is like brokering this deal the whole reason why they're putting $1 billion in Alex Morello's stupid fucking pocket is, uh, is is to ensure that this doesn't turn into a crazy litigious legal battle where he turns around and sues them. But I want to talk about, before we talk about sort of the deal that's in place, that everyone knows, uh, but Chris Johnson came out and like confirmed a lot of the stuff today in, in a column for The Athletic. I want to talk about two things. Okay. One... They find like like in two things that both encapsulate everything that is and like I'm sorry Coyotes fans but like this it's very important that we come out here in every show and as long as it's relevant we just like friggin' sledgehammer Al, uh, Alex Morello when it comes to his business practices because as the way this deal is set up now like he there the NHL is basically holding a spot for him to bring the Coyotes back to be an owner again. And which is a genuinely awful idea. Yeah. And, it, and you know what? It won't happen. He won't win that land auction. He will not be able to build like he will not be able to build the, the arena that he needs to that the NHL like will require him to have f- to bring a team back. It just won't happen. Like like he's not going to get it done. If he hasn't got it done now, he's not especially like you think they're going to be cool with him do, doing all this now. Now the team's being ripped away. The mayor of Scottsdale's like <laughs> exactly. Like, what's crazy is the mayor of Scottsdale, as we talked about, came out last week and wrote an op-ed basically telling Alex Morello to go fuck himself. Do you know how bad you have, like, how down bad you have to be for the mayor to write an op-ed specifically about you? And that was, like, the (laughs) second or third most embarrassing thing that happened that week. Like, like, this guy's a clown car. Okay, so let's... So, but the main thing is that he comes out with, like, the whole time throughout all this, Coyotes fans have been left to grapple with the fact that they're getting their team ripped away from them, and their their owner is, or their, their team and their owner specifically, is not only not acknowledging the fact that that is happening, but he's, like, gaslighting them it, with, with, like, these motivational uh, motivational tweets and, and all this other kind of stuff. Well, and not even just that. Like, they tweeted out that statement. From Alex Morello. So I was just it was say, yeah. in all caps. Yeah. And it was very clearly not saved properly because you could see the blinking cursor in the actual no, they just screen- photo they, they that sc- they tweeted out. Like, they all you have to do doc. is save as JPEG. Or PDF. But, like, for Twitter, you ideally want to go JPEG. I, under no circumstances, zero, should there be a cursor in an ownership statement and then beyond that so they tweet that out they play calgary on uh sunday night and nothing from the twitter account Mm. it was a 6-5 game it wasn't a 0-0 like shootout loss or whatever it was a 6-5 game it was 11 goals in the game nothing from the coyotes 
so it's you can tell because like uh, we know who runs the account and like how he operates that was clearly an edict from or the, the, or the guy's just not there anymore no he's there he's there but they're firing all those people um no no they brought him on specifically for relocation like he started a week and a half two weeks ago so he was brought on specifically for this so the rest of their social media team is gone yeah i know like all of their business operation people are gone now the thing is is after all the bullshit that this that this team has tweeted they basically shit posted their way into a relocation yeah they, that's all they did alex morello jr used the official Arizona Coyotes Twitter account, the one with the golden check mark that you pay $1,000 a month to have that is supposed to be like the face uh, uh, the face of communication for your business entity, for your hockey team. He used that as basically his own personal burner account. And after all of that, your second last game, you don't say a thing. You don't tweet out the starting lineup. You don't tweet out the starting goalie. You don't do any goal. Uh, you, like when you all, don't even tweet out the final score. When all of this shit came down, when when the news first broke that that they were, were moving basically, or that it was likely that they were going to move, the Coyotes account tweeted, "Happy wish everyone wish Dylan Gunther a happy birthday." <laughs> it was like, wait, what? <laughs> like like uh, during all that, like it's not like it's not like they've they've read the room before. So here's and also the with the statement too, Rachel. I'm not sure if you saw this, but someone put it into a into an AI tracker and it was 99% AI generated. Oh man! See, like okay, they didn't even spend the time to use their own brain, at, like in critical thinking, to write something from the heart. Even though it, it clearly it's not from the heart, he basically used like three paragraphs to Chat say. Chat GPT that. To, he used, he basically used three paragraphs to say, "Wait, I, like can't tell you anything yet. I promise I will though." Like, but they. He just basically put into chat GPT, please write a, please, uh, write a statement to, uh, to Coyotes fans that I will keep them updated on relocation soon. So here's Hit where we're going to end on this. Yeah. He has, for five years, he holds the team mm -hmm. brand and Arizona, like... And their AHL affiliate, and their, too. Yeah, but hang on. So okay. he owns NHL only. I don't, honestly, I don't give a fuck about the AHL team because it doesn't mean anything. But, like, the... He owns the nhl like territory rights in arizona yeah he has he's entitled to an expansion team and he gets to keep like the branding and like the coyotes branding and stuff like that my issue with that and we're gonna do an episode in the off season this is a july episode where we're gonna do a breakdown on like the new team and like what happens and when we get all of the legalese and we're able to sift through it and understand kind of what the direction is going to be. But I think it's a major, I understand the league trying to protect themselves legally, but I think if you're Gary Bettman, you are hoping to high hell that this arena doesn't get built in five years. Cause if you have to give this guy an expansion team, number one, the NHL shouldn't be expanding because they can clearly yeah. can't even keep 32 teams afloat. Mm. But number two, this guy's already shown that he's a shitty owner and he doesn't deserve a team and no, he sh just shouldn't be trusted to steward a a team in the future like i'm sorry but fool me once shame on you fool me twice that's an entirely different story and so that's kind of where we're gonna end is like well, i'm gonna let you in on a little secret rachel oh god okay he's not like they're not the coyotes will return to arizona alex morello will not be their owner See, and that's the ideal situation. No, it's like, that's not the, that is what is going to happen. Yeah, but I'm saying, like, if you're the NHL, you want to be in the fifth biggest market mm -hmm, in the absolutely. United States. However, you need to make sure you don't have some jabroni running it. So the NHL's job here, Gary Bettman specifically, because his job is ownership, is to properly vet somebody mm -hmm. to be able to steward a team in Arizona. But the problem that you have now is is you don't need expansion 32 teams already too many teams exactly until tw like 75 to 80 percent of the team doesn't or 80 percent of the league doesn't, doesn't need revenue yeah. sharing you shouldn't be expanding end of story goodbye thank you very much it will not happen like i'm telling yeah. you it will like i know i know you know a lot of people are worried that that like potentially morello he will not win that land that that land auction and even if he does I want Ryan Smith to buy it out of spite. That'd be hilarious. <laughs>
That's nothing to him, too. It's like 65 Speaking million. Speaking of whatever. which, okay. But hang he will on. not win it. And even if he does, Rachel, even if he does find a way to win that land auction, he will not get. I like. He won't be able to build anything because of Scottsdale. He will not get that, that built. Like, I'm telling no. you, if Alex Morello wins the land auction, gets the arena built, and brings the Coyotes back, I will, like, literally. Like, I will. Go to the home opener. Mike will fly, no, I will, I will fly to, to the home opener, and I will streak down Front Street. <laughs> I'm telling you, like legitimately. I will, like you. We have it on tape now. It will not happen. So, do you think the one positive to come out of all of yeah. this? Ryan Smith, it Captain owns Canada the, baby owns the Jazz. Mm-hmm. Um, Lori Markinen, Keontae George, John Collins, whatever. Do we think that now that Colin he's Sexton, he's going to be in charge of a team that? He might actually spend on this team, and they might oh, be will. competitive because they have so much pick capital. They have so many good prospects that realistically, if they did well in free agency this year, I could conceivably see them challenging for the playoffs next year. Because you're under a new owner who actually wants to spend to the cap and like isn't going to mess around. And because you're under a new owner, perhaps players will want to play there because it's not going to be mental warfare like Matt gonna, Dumba yeah, said. Was- so like, I wonder. Given how good their cap situation is, because they haven't they have, friggin' signed have, anybody for God knows how long, um, I wonder like, is this kind of the ideal situation of like you have no bad contracts really, and it allows you to be competitive because you're Ryan Smith and you have billions of dollars? Yeah, it's a good question. Um, I, I think it I guess all we'll have to see, right? Well, it all hinges first. Uh, this is I know you wanted to have to to end it on like a, a happy note, but this but this happy note only reinforces the sour note of the fact that the Coyote, Coyotes fans literally, like there was basically one year where they were able to say that the team was really good, was when they made it, surprisingly, to the Western Conference Final. And, and they, that was on the back of Mike Smith. Exactly. And, but like, Coyotes fans have basically never seen good hockey, and they've, and how, and like they've, they've just gritted their teeth and, and suffered through so many failed rebuilds that finally... When one looks like it's something, like it might tra- like transition to something good. The amount of pick capital, the amount of prospects that they have, Logan Cooley, Dylan Gunther, all these guys, like incredible stuff. And they finally look like they're turning the corner, and then they move. Like then they get ripped out of their hand. It's it's crazy. That what what will determine how good that team is, is like you're right. They have a million dollars. They've uh, not a million. They have a billion dollars in cap space. Basically, they have a billion picks in the first three rounds for the next like however many drafts. You know, like, like you they, could trade that capital and actually bring in players. Exactly, they have great, and I think that's that might be a big thing they do because yeah. I'm not sure, like how, like the first thing we heard is that a lot of Arizona players uh, are not super happy at the thought of moving to to Salt Lake. I know it's moving from Arizona to Salt Lake. I get it, but like it, it's a matter of do you think NHL players will want to play? Because you can have a you can have I had, all we had a the YouTube comment. In the world. We had a YouTube yeah. commenter being like the Salt Lake City slander is so real. You got to be careful. I'm like, okay, if you're comparing Phoenix to Salt Lake City, you need to give your it's goddamn not, head a shake. A I don't even know what to tell you, man. That's like comparing like literally some remote city in the middle of nowhere to a major metropolis. Like it's just you hey know man, what? I, I'm done talking about the Coyotes. Yeah. Hey man, I'm look, fucking I'll done. say is there's a reason why when LeBron became a free agent in 2010, he didn't go. You know what? I'm taking my talents to Salt Lake. Yeah, it didn't. Exactly. Like, like you have to be somewhat. Yeah, it, it's just a matter of whether or not we want we are gonna if, if players will want to play in, in Salt Lake, then they can be they can potentially turn it around really quick. Um, I have a question that I wanted to pose to you before we get into our deep dive. Okay. And I actually like, I, I it was because I, I saw a, a thing of playoff beards. And and uh, and it made me think about the etiquette around a playoff beard, Rachel. Okay. Um, and you know, like as a as a man, I can grow one. As a woman, I don't believe you can grow. I one. cannot. Um, I didn't want to assume, just in <laughs> case. Uh, and and we all know that you know, there there are women that can grow beards. There are men that can't. You know, everything in between. But my question is. Let's say you are a man and you have a beard. Let's say you even have like like stubble. Or like okay. scruff, like I have right now. I do need to shave, but like, yeah. um, the playoffs start. Do you shave before you go into the playoffs and then grow the playoff beard throughout the course of the playoffs, or do you go or or do you just go into the playoffs and not shave and have that beard grow on top of your existing beard? Okay, it depends. There is one exception that I can think of. Okay. 
And one exception only. What? Brent Burns. If he opened Saturday in the playoffs with clean shaven, I, I think I'd have a stroke. Like, it's just kind of become his persona. But I think, generally speaking, if you're a guy, um, I mean, like, Kucherov kind of has a beard, too. But I think, generally speaking, you probably want to go in clean-shaven. I think it's Movember rules, where you shave on October 31st. So you so Unless you're Brent Burns, because that's your even, shtick. Yeah, No, I that's know. your shtick. Yeah, that's true. But it's also... And, or, like, Radko Gudis. That's his shtick, too. Like, there's a couple of guys where it's like, okay, if Austin Matthews all of a sudden decided to start growing a beard this week, no. But he he could keep his mustache, as far as I'm concerned, because a mustache is not a beard. Yeah, but you but then I, I'd say he should trim up the rest of his face. Yeah, absolutely. He should shave the rest of his face. I, I think – and I think that that's sort of fair. Um, You know what? It's honestly – hockey players are so superstitious to each their own. That's true. But my thing about the playoff beards – and maybe it's – I'm a woman, so I, I don't appreciate it as much or, like, whatever. But let's I have more hair on my head than pretty much any, any NHL player has, like, on theirs or in a beard. Like, my hair is long and thick. Mm. Um, what I would say is if you're going to grow that playoff beard, you need to, like, take care of it so it doesn't look unruly. You know what? I'm a, I'm the complete opposite of that. I'm not I, saying you have to trim it. I'm saying you have to wash it. I don't want to see like yeah. shit growing in your beard. But you know what? I'm I honestly think I think what the playoff beard stands for is that it's basically a symbol that you don't care about anything else other than winning. You don't even care about your personal appearance. Well, you should shower. And yeah, obviously you should shower. But I'm th- I'm saying like I'm of the opinion that and I used to do this during summers in the like like. Uh, oh yeah, Mike used to year. grow beards, and it used to drive me it's, insane. It's great because like I just I didn't ever, I didn't have to be on camera, I didn't have to do anything, so I could just let it grow. And it's same with these guys, where like it's the playoffs, you can just focus and let it grow, and you want it to be as unwildly as it can possibly be. But it needs to be like, and this is the thing, like I don't mind if it gets a little unruly or scraggly, like that's fine. But like I shouldn't on camera be able to see dandruff in your beard. That is disgusting. I think I think the 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 baseline should be like after the game when you're showering, you, you wash you, your beard. You run some shampoo through the beard. Yeah, that's all know? I'm asking for is like. And if it's dandruff, it, you, it's some head and shoulders. You I know? don't want to see like mm. flakes in your beard or like bits of food because I have seen that and I'm like that's just bits of foods unruly, crazy. disgusting. But, but like nonsense. I think when you grow, I think if unless you're right, unless you have a beard like. Burns, uh, like Gudis. Burns or Gudis or like where it's like a fixture of your face. Thornton. <laughs> Thornton, like where it's a fixture of your face, then I think you should be clean shaven going to the playoffs. I think it should be a fresh start, a clean slate, and then as the playoffs go, I want your beard to reflect like the the punishment that you have been through, the time that you have spent a- like achingly going towards this goal. I think. That's that's personally my opinion as a man, as someone who can grow a beard, but who, who am I to say? And we wonder why Mike doesn't have a girlfriend. Exactly. There are a lot more reasons than that. <laughs> well, yeah. Um, all right. Uh, let's get into our deep dive. So let's talk about... I'm excited about, about I'm this. Ex- I'm excited for you to try and convince me that getting 100 assists is more impressive than getting 70 goals. It isn't. Okay, good. I'm glad we're on the same page. That's been the show. Um, <laughs> no, but... Uh, now, both of them, incredibly impressive. Oh, yeah. They're two of the most, like incredible feats you can like you can possibly accomplish in a season so know? i'm gonna read this to you because i want to be correct and i spent a bunch of time doing math today um while mike was at work so we're gonna break down 100 assists then 70 goals and then we can chat about mm-hmm. like what is more impressive or like why we think 70 okay. is more impressive so here's some numbers I'm just gonna throw them at you for the hundred assists. Don't block out seventy goals. Yeah. So the hundred assists. Mike has not really seen any of this math that I've done. No, I haven't. So you, you said you spend all day doing math. That sounds like a terrible day. Yeah. Well, I do math for a living. So, um, hundred assists has happened thirteen times in NHL history. Mm. Hasn't happened since 1991. Gretzky did it eleven times consecutively like in a row. That's Mario did it once, and Bobby Orr did it once, which for a second, Mm -hmm. how the fuck did a defenseman get 100 assists? 
Because he was playing against a plumber named Mike Wazowski, who was like five foot six. Do you not come, be, you know, monsters Inc. slandering on this podcast. No, but it's. I'm, 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 but like, okay, we talk about seventy goals being impressive and hundred assists being impressive. To be a defenseman that gets hundred assists is more impressive than any forward getting hundred oh, assists. Like, not this is a that's a different level of accomplishment. A doubt, without a doubt, it is un unfathomable for a defenseman whose primary job is defense. To get 100 assists. However, I think there's a reason why Yeah, it's only happened during the era when guys were coming from their factory jobs to play a full hockey game that night. So, you want some era-adjusted math that I did today? Sure. So, I used um, the same calculation as Hockey Reference does, um, but I kind of algebra it a little bit. So, era-adjusted. We said it's been done th- uh, 13 times. Mm-hmm. Era-adjusted... It's been done six times. Five by Gretzky. Okay. Who is the sixth? Who? Era adjusted. Era adjusted. Who is the sixth? I will give you a hint. Mm-hmm. It is not Lemieux and it is not Orr. Is it McDavid? It is. Yeah. So in 2020, 2021, which was one of the COVID shortened seasons, McDavid had 72 assists in 56 games. Fuck off and according to hockey reference that is equal to 108 assists over a full season era adjusted that is preposterous and didn't get up enough attention so if a guy got uh, got what was it 72 <laughs> assists you said or 76? 72 and 56 yeah so if a guy got 72 points in 56 games that guy's getting like an eight million dollar contract the next year if he's a pending ufa Connor mcdavid did that in assists and it was like ho-hum yeah so he had 100 points. He, he had 100, <laughs> 100 points in 56 games. He's absurd. So I think the reason that maybe people think it's maybe a little less impressive is because the f- two guys are going to do it this year. McDavid's going to hit it, and Kucherov is mm-hmm. going to hit it. Hitting 100 this year. This is more impressive than the COVID year, too, because McDavid play- did it against the whole league instead of solely Canada, a, a bunch of garbage teams in canada yeah like vancouver Le- was dog shit. the habs the, the habs were shit all- the sends were shit it was the basically flames were pretty wonky it was basically like- the leafs the jets and the oilers so yeah hitting 100 this year era adjusted would be the seventh best season of all time behind gretzky's five and mcdavid's in 2020 mm. 2021 and i feel like that season gets forgotten about just because it's prorated and era adjusted but you're talking about, and this number is probably the most important one. So, seventh best season of all time as it pertains to assists, which is still That's absolutely amazing. incredible. Like, mm-hmm. make no mistake about it. It's historic. Absolutely incredible, and they should both get their flowers for it. But only one can. Uh, only one can win the heart. This is why there should be a playmaker award. There's a there's a goal scorer award. There's, there should be a playmaker award. There, it's literally sitting right there. You, it's the Wayne Gretzky it's the award. The Wayne Gretzky playmaker, outstanding uh, playmaker. Not the even Gretzky, most assists. You have the Richard. Most assists. The Rocket Richard is the most goals. The Wayne Gretzky award is the most assists. Because Wayne Gretzky, if he never <laughs> scored a goal, would still be the NHL's leading scorer. I, that's how many assists he got. I told my friends who are like more basketball mm-hmm. and uh, football guys that stat last night. And all of them just went blank face. They were like, "Wait, what?" It's like it's like <laughs> it's like if you're saying like if Steph Curry never hit a three, he'd still be the the NBA's all time points leader. It, like that's like like that's just bonkers. Like, it's, it's it's not ins- true, and it's bonkers. But like like with with Gretzky, it's true. Like he was so yeah. much better than everyone else. Like the it's fact that we not don't have a funny. the fact even just aside from that, the fact that we don't have an award named after Wayne Gretzky is insane. We, it's the so the. OHL playoff MVP is the Gretzky award, but I'm like the NHL has a Messier award and not a Gretzky award. Oh, I hate Mark Messier too. I don't like him right? very much. Here's here are two things I would like to see happen. What? Three things. One, the Conn Smythe Trophy is renamed. Who would you like to name it after? Ideally, Mr. Beliveau. Justin Williams. Um, but I I think it potentially could be renamed. Uh, number two, most assists becomes the Gretzky Award. Done. Number three, we get an award for best defensive defenseman, and that mm. is the Norris, and the best offensive defenseman is the Bobby Orr, is the Bobby Orr yeah. Trophy. And and that is what I'd like to see happen. So, like I said, seventh best season of all time if, when they both hit 100 assists. Mm-hmm. Let's talk about 70 goals. 
which is the most the more impressive stat. So, ready? Era adjusted, Matthews is on pace for 72.4 goals. He's already era adjusted at 70. Mm-hmm. He's already there. It What's is What's he at right now? Not era adjusted, Rachel. Uh the sex number. Hell yeah. Sex. Awesome. We love it. Continue. So, if he scores actually 70, mm-hmm. it would be the second best goal scoring season of all time behind Brett Hull's 90-91 season. However, if he stays at 69, he would end up third nice. behind Ovechkin's mark in 2008. But he would only end up third by like 0. 0.4. Mm-hmm. So that's ahead of McGillney's season, which is the last player to score 70 goals. The closest Wayne Gretzky got was 68, whereas Ovechkin got 72 in 07 08. So right now, Matthews is on pace to finish second. The lowest he can finish is third. He has 50 plus five on five goals. That has only happened 10 times in NHL history and not since Timu Solani in 93. Three of those 10 were Gretzky. And when adjusted for era, it's only happened three times. Hull and Gretzky twice. So we are talking about a feat that if you adjust for era, has been accomplished three times from an even strength perspective. Mm -hmm. And it would be the second best season for goal scoring in the history of the NHL above anything Ovechkin did and above anything Gretzky did. So what is more impressive? Well, I think two records... Mm -hmm as it pertains to goal scoring and being higher up the list in terms of era adjusted all time seasons makes 70 more impressive. Never mind like the players that are involved second all time and only doing something that's happened three times is more impressive than seventh all time doing something that's happened era adjusted six times. I mean, I agree with you. Like, like, there's no debate here. There's no embrace debate. I agree. It's harder to score goals than it is to assist. You can't, you can't, like... That's why there's two assists on every goal. Yeah, you can't accident... Well, you can't accident your way in, into a goal, obviously. But, like, you can't, like... You can't leave the... It's very rare that you can leave the ice and be credited with a goal. You can leave the ice and be credited with an assist. Like, it's, you know, like, not not taking anything away from assists. They're important. They, But, like, you can't... There, you can score a goal unassisted. You can't assist a, <laughs> a goal that doesn't exist. You can't assist on gold. You know, like it, like it. it, it makes and there's sense. a reason that goals are worth like zero point seven in a game score, and then assists are primary assists are like zero point five, and then secondary assists are like zero point three. Or even just like in fantasy, like there's a reason why like like goal scoring goals is is, is weighted way more in fantasy than it is in this is for assists. Both yeah. are obviously, like, if you think of the last two seasons we've had. Last mm-hmm. year, we had Eric Carlson break the 100-point yeah, mark as a, as a defenseman, defenseman which is nuts. And McDavid score 64. Mm-hmm. Also insane. This year, we have two guys getting 100 assists mm-hmm. and one guy who era adjusted has 70 goals. Like, you might... Outside of error adjusted, like, he might get seventy. He's at sixty-nine. He might he's not. One, he's one away. He will. He might. But what I'm saying is, is error adjusted. Regardless, he's at seventy. He's at seventy. Yeah. So when we're having a discussion about where the game is right now, this is the best hockey, yeah, has ever been yeah. in terms of talent, mm-hmm. and we're now talking about people being like we. We just spent 15 minutes going through, like, era-adjusted stuff. And the most prevalent person that was brought up was Wayne Gretzky. Yeah. We're seeing players <laughs> be able to accomplish things that, like, in a routine way that used to never even be thought of before. And I think it's also, like, we grew up, basically, of the dead puck era. Like, we grew up, like, we are both born in 1996. Yeah. So, like, we, we grew up during an era of hockey even after the lockout where things kind of bloomed for a second, like we went back down to Jamie Ben winning the art Ross with 87 points. Connor David's going to b- blow that away and assist this year. <laughs> Connor McDavid and Nikita Kucherov have more many, assists yeah. than Jamie Ben had points when he won the, the year art he Ross. won the art Ross. And like, 
I just think about like looking back on it. There was a time outside like Crosby was hurt, and I was wondering like who's the actual like star here? Like Ovechkin's there, but it was before Stamkos had blossomed, and it was like oh, I guess like Datsuk maybe is, is like I a big love name, and, and, and it's awesome. Play. But like right now, if you you can go to pretty much any team except for the Arizona Coyotes, and even then, like Logan Cooley will be a star one day. You can go to them. And, Gunther, too. And Dylan Gunther will be a star one day uh, and all that. But, like, you can go to pretty much any team and point to a player and go, like, this guy is a stud. Like, uh, like not just a stud, but, OMG, like, a, we're like going to do that. We have time. I'm going to name off the teams, and you got to tell me sure, who their star go. is. You only get one. Or oh, only one? Okay. Well, actually, yeah, you, you get one. All right. Uh, we'll start with the Canadian teams. Vancouver. Elias Patterson. Quinn Hughes. Perfect. Ed. <laughs> Edmonton, we're not going to yeah. talk about that. Uh, Calgary. Well, current Calgary's tough. Right. Like, okay. They're, they're one of the ones that's not, but like. So on. let's see how many teams don't have it. Okay. Okay. So Calgary. Go ahead. Winnipeg. I mean, I guess you could say Mark Shifley. Connor Hellebuck, I think. Connor Hellebuck. Yeah. yeah. Right. Toronto. Austin done. Matthews. Ottawa. Orlando, yeah. Ottawa. I would say like Tim Stutzla could be there one day. Not I great. think he's the closest they have. Yeah, he's, he's definitely the closest. He's the closest. Uh, yeah. Montreal? They don't have anybody right now. No, they don't. Oh, no. Here come the mob. I do the mob. think, I do think, we said star, not superstar. I do think Caulfield, well, Caulfield and Slavkovsky have the potential to get there. They're not there yet. Caulfield better, you know, Caulfield better, better kick it up a notch, too. Like, uh, Buffalo. Big, yeah. I, you, I could name like three. The, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Okay, Boston, Pasternak, yeah. done. The Rangers or, and McAvoy. Yeah, yeah. The Rangers again. I could do Panarin, Fox, uh, Shesterkin, whatever. Anyone. Yeah. The Islanders, Matthew Barzell, yeah. or Noah Dobson at this point. And Noah Dobson, yeah, uh, and, and Sorokin. Yeah, the Devils. Yeah. Jack Hughes. Jack Hughes. Yeah. Um. Then like, okay, so now we're just we're literally going. <laughs> Chicago, not going to have yeah, the discussion. Bedard, we already know. Yeah. Um, but based on last night, too, Frank Nazar. Like, oh! Nazar. I'll never, I'll never forget the most preposterous thing I've ever heard a scout say. I was in the press box last year. Okay. And uh, I can't remember who the Leafs were playing, but it was but Pontus Holmberg was having a good game. Like, I don't think he had scored, but he was, he was looking good. And I had a guy, and I remember it was a scout from the Stars, and which is crazy because the Stars are smart. So this is a pro scout, at least. Right. Older, like very much an older gentleman. And he went, you know what? I see a lot of Bob Gainey in this guy. Bob Gainey? He's like, you know what? I think, Bro, what? <laughs> I think Gainey was a bit better defensively, but, you know, but I see a lot of Bob Gainey in Pontus Holmberg. Like, I think, but I think Holmberg might be Bro. better offensively. Like, that's what he said. He's like, I think Gainey was a bit better defensively, but I think I. But, talking about like, a guy who has his. And I'm like, retired. this is Pontus Holmberg. And this is before he, like, like, he's got, like, a full season under his belt now. This was in his rookie year. He had, like, 12 games of experience at this point. All right, so let's get back Continue. to our stars. Go, go, go. Florida. Matthew, Matthew Kachuk. Kachuk Sasha Barkov, Ek- Sam Reinhardt. Even Aaron Eckblad, like Yeah. Yeah. Carolina. I, An, any number of players. Name a bunch. Svechnikov. Aho. Uh, Gensel. Like, Gens- yeah, Gensel. Slavin. You know, like, any of those guys. <laughs> Tampa. There's about five of yeah. them. Washington. Ovechkin. Self-explanatory. Yeah. Detroit. Larkin. Larkin, Philadelphia, nothing yet. Michkov coming. I would say Konechny's close there. Close. Ish close. But he's not uh, a super, like, he's not a star. He's, he's not a, a star, he's yeah. He's just a very, very, he's like an 85. Yeah. You know? Uh, Pittsburgh. Sidney Grazi, <laughs> Chris Letang, Eric Carlson, Jake Gant. Oh, wait. Literally anyone. Yeah. Uh, Columbus, Adam Fantilli, I think, is probably mm-hmm. there um like he's gonna get there you will get there. i have no yeah. doubt about it uh dallas i mean Miro Lit- heiskanen jason robertson rupe <laughs> hints jake ottinger you know like uh does colorado have anybody nathan mckinnon <laughs> kale uh, mccarr kale mccarr miko ranton and the list goes on exactly so like then you go to like la Anze kopitar drew Doughty. pierre luc dubois <laughs> oh, jesus christ nashville Self-explanatory yeah. on that one. Roman Soros, Yossi, Yossi, Soros, Forsberg, even like Vegas, Eichel, every everyone, every, that got actually the everyone, but like Eichel, Stone, like all those guys. Yeah. San Jose is gonna be whoever the first overall pick is this so, year. So Macklin Celebrini, yeah. 
Uh, and even then, like I think like Eklund can potentially be. There I one, love Eklund. Yeah, like, can potentially be there one. Will day. Smith. Will Smith can be there one day. You know, like they they have. But right now guys. they don't have yeah. anybody, which fine by design too. Anaheim, Leo Carlson is well, yeah, going like to be Leo a Carlson. star. I think Mint, Mint Yukov can be is going to be really good. Oh yeah, Mint Yukov uh, is going to be uh, good. Zellweger could get really good as well. McTavish, like Mc, Mason McTavish. They're going to be good. Uh, the Ducks the are going to be good. Costel, was it Colangelo? The guy they just Sam got? Colangelo. Yeah he's, yeah, he's pretty good too. I like, think he's a good middle six guy, yeah. but like not a not star. A star but like, I think Leo Carlson is, Leo is the like, guy. There. The sky's the limit for him. Yeah. Um. Seattle. Matty Beniers. Yep. yep. That's who I was going to go with. And Vince Dunn. Yeah, Vince Dunn's pretty good. Yeah. Minnesota, uh, Kaprizov. I mean, yeah, yeah, Kaprizov. But then, like, oh, and Matt, Saint, Saint Matt Louis Boldy's is the other Matt one. Boldy could be nipping at the heels one day. Yeah, really stuff. And then St. Louis, Jordan Cairo, Robert Thomas. I mean, they're not st- stars yet. Like they, they they've kind of. I think Cairo is like on the star. precipice. Yeah. yeah, I think of so, that. Too. So yeah, like, I don't. Not every team has like a star Dude, like, star, but like what, 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 there were like six teams we mentioned that didn't have a definitive like star. And then there were a few teams where we're like, there's five of them. If you go back, yeah, if you go back like five, six, seven years, you and you do that that poll, that that survey around the league, I, that number's down to like 2019, maybe. Like there were a lot of teams that were good, but they had a lot of mid guys on there. And mid can get you far sometimes, like because it's you know greater than the sum of your parts. But the star power, the depth of star power, every year, like I feel like there are less. This also happens too when there are less draft busts than there yep. have ever been. Like the bust rate is, is it is much lower. It's I believe I saw it's, it's never like been lower. I think thirty percent lower or something like that. Like it's it's near there. As I, like I, I don't think 20, it's ever been lower. Like late, you really 20s. can't imagine a guy because like back in the day, like they a, were drafting like Dylan McElrath yeah. at like tenth overall. Like back in the day, like you'd get a top five pick and he'd just never play. Like like Gar- like Griffin Nick- Re- Gif- Griffin Reinhardt, which Nikita never Filatov, Nikita Filatov, like any Jaredev, any of these guys, they would just like you know you would even I even think of guys like freaking Hugh Jessamine, the huge oh, specimen, man. like the guy he was picked. I think that guy Alexander picked, like, Day. Well, yeah, obviously, but like there were guys like Day, there were guys like Patrick Steffen, there were oh. guys you know like there would. When was the last time like the last real bona fide number one overall bust was like. Like Nail Yakupov, then even then yeah. he had a decent rookie year. And then Nolan Patrick was injured. Yeah, that so that that doesn't even count. That doesn't even really But like count. when's the last time like a top three pick just vanished? Or top five pick even just vanished. Well, like, it was that year that the Yakupov, Murray, Galchenyuk, Reinhardt, Riley even, year. Even then Murray carved out like a ten year career. Yeah, like he was but he wasn't like a He wasn't a star, but he was a, remember the conversation we were having about Slavkovsky and yeah. people dumped on us because I I'll said never Slavkovsky's forget that a conversation bust. With each other. Ryan Murray is actually a fantastic comparison. Mm-hmm. He's a bust in the sense that in no world mm-hmm. was he worth a second overall pick, but he had a fine career. He had a perfectly fine career. At his peak, he was a very good number four defenseman. Like, yeah, fine. So I think, obviously, you want and something you want more out of a, a pick like that. Whereas, like, if Ryan Murray would have carved out that career as a 21st overall pick, you're like, hey, that's like, that's fine, what we, we were expecting. We got ten years of like decent. Top I expect four a fucking you. superstar if I'm drafting exactly. you in the top. But three. we've seen a lot a of that. Like fucking superstar. We've seen a lot of that. They're basically like if you go back through the drafts, the guys are being picked even top ten. Like they're like like in in re- basically after that that uh, that Yakupov draft. Like I would say since Matthews got drafted, the top ten picks like they've they've made their <laughs> only you eleven. <laughs> I mean, obviously, there's oh, gonna be a Vert- there's gonna be a Vertanen or Olievi, o- and they're gonna be for the same team. And they're gonna be for the same. But even like even like Nick Ritchie, man, like he carved out a career. Yeah, he was playing you know, until like you this don't, year. You don't see these huge busts, and so it, like just the depth of hockey talent in the world, from both in the NHL and at an amateur level, has never been higher. It's fantastic. I yeah, I I think we love it. So who I knows think- who could who could break seventy goals in the next little bit? Yeah, I, I'm I'm interested to see. Um, I mean, I loved doing this breakdown because I feel mm. like we hear a lot of people talking about like how impressive it is, and they're both individually impressive. But I think to contextualize it in the sense of like one's been done thirteen times, another's been done eleven, but then you have like the fifty plus even strength goals that's really era mm-hmm. adjusted been done three times, and then like from a goal scoring perspective, it's been done way less, yeah. and then from an assist perspective. It's actually been done, like, it would be the seventh best season of all time, mm-hmm. um, whereas Matthews would be the second 
best season of all time or yeah. third at the at the very lowest. So I think it's frankly it's it is it's slightly more impressive. Mm-hmm. They're both insanely impressive. Yeah, definitely. But one is slightly more impressive than the other. And and that's kind of where I sit on it. Like if if we were sitting here a year from now and Connor McDavid had 99 assists, would you be surprised? No. But if we were sitting here next year and Austin Matthews had 70 goals, anybody had 70 goals, would you be Again, surprised? I I'd, would be surprised. I'd be like, I'd raise my eyebrow at least. I could see him doing it, but it would raise my eyebrow. I would be, yeah. Like, you know what? That's a great way of putting it. Like, you know what? Another thing too, it would be like if, if you said Matthews got 70 goals and he only scored one empty netter all year. That's a, a genuine. Like I would, I would love stat. to run the numbers on this of being like, okay, so the, the, the even strength thing has happened. X amount of times before. I want to know the highest amount of goals someone has scored in a season with with the least amount of empty netters. Uh, it's season. it is Matthews. It there, is Matthews. The other one, go. the other one, which is ridiculous. In my opinion, that's the most impressive goal scoring, uh, uh, like a uh, uh, season ever. Is so seventy goals with one. You know what? Fifty five even strength and one empty netter. You know what's even crazier? What? He leads the league in goal posts. He is twenty. One Fuck off. goal post. If he had, so I, then I went and I did the math again. If he had like the league average for his like shooting mm-hmm. in goal posts versus like pucks that went in, he'd have 81 goals. We would be talking about a player who is a goal a game in the year 2024. It feels like Matthews is a goal a game at this it point honestly anyway. Does. So but like, like it's but to, that's just think crazy. about that. If he was just average as it pertained to goal posts, he'd have eighty plus goals. Yeah, it's <laughs> nuts. I would actually just leave at that point. That is absolutely we're, nuts. We're done. But yeah. I think the most impressive thing, and this whole heart trophy conversation, which you and I we're gonna chat about mm-hmm. on Friday. On Friday, I think as mm-hmm. our playoff preview. Um, the thing that pisses me off. And they're like, oh, well, like, Kucherov should win the heart because of what he's done. Sorry, Kucherov is dog shit defensively. Matthews is scoring 70. And, like, a Selkie and candidate. is a Selkie candidate. Yeah. So you want to talk about value to team? Maybe play both sides of the puck. I can get mm-hmm. behind Nathan McKinnon. But same for Connor McDavid. Like, he's in there with Kucherov. Unless you – you have to have more than one thing. Because now we've just discussed that 70 goals is more impressive. And he's in the Selkie conversation. You guys did the less impressive thing, and neither one of you are as good as defensively as Austin Matthews is. So why should you be in the heart over him? I'm sure. Def- I'm sure. Uh, like Gretzky has done this at some point or whatever. But I'd be curious to see if anyone's won the heart and the Selkie in the same year. Gretzky hasn't. I don't think Gretzky ever won a Selkie. Really? Yeah. So has no. Uh, Matthews could legitimately win the heart and the Selkie this year. I. I think Reinhardt or Barkov is winning the Selkie this year. But the fact that you're in the top five conversation tells me that you're valuable at No, but I'm both. saying like you think they're going to, but like there's a there's a conceivable path. Like you're like you're in contention. If you, I mean just the fact that you're in contention. If you won makes the Selkie, you would you be like, That's bullshit, that's crazy. I I can't imagine, I can't believe how he did this. I think I'd probably raise an eyebrow just because of how ridiculously good Sam Reinhardt's been this mm-hmm. year. Um, but I think generally speaking, this conversation applies to the heart because it's like Kucherov is good offensively. He's not good defensively. Like, sorry, Mm -hmm. I, I, he's not, he's just not McDavid getting better defensively. Still not great. Austin Matthews is in the Selkie conversation and scoring 70 goals. You know how fucking hard that is to do. It's, it's the hardest thing you can do. Exactly. Sam Reinhart is in the Selkie conversation. He plays with Sasha Barkov. He's got 50 odd goals. Like, the That's only, extremely difficult to yeah. do. The only thing that can make Matthew's achievement more impressive here is if he started racking up Vesna numbers on top of that too. Like it's. Crazy. I kind of there is a there is a small part of me that wants him to score like a hat trick in the, one of the next two games just to put the exclamation point on like I might mm-hmm. not win the heart, but I I deserve to be nominated, kind of thing. If he's not, he if does. he's not. If he's not nominated, I will burn the NHL offices to the ground. <laughs> I don't think be, he's going to be nominated. I think it's going to be McDavid, Kucherov, bullshit. and McKinnon. That is fucking and it's bullshit gonna be, if he's it's not media, nominated. They're going to be like, no, it's not his turn. Okay, the guy Stupid. who scored 70 goals this year? To being, Fuck you. He should win it. But to not even get nominated 
I would call out as even as a PHWA member, I would call yeah. out the PHWA. We're on both that. PHWA members. I would call, I would call that, out. that out. And I will call out every single person individually. Like, I will sit on this podcast, and I will read fucking names. If he is not even nominated, like, I will fist fight them all. Like, right? Individually. There, there, there is no excuse. Five guys go on the Hart Trophy ballot. There is zero, zero excuse to leave any of McDavid, Matthews, McKinnon, or Kucherov off your ballot. You can pick your fifth. I don't care. But if those four aren't on the ballot, you don't deserve a vote. If those four aren't aren't on the ballot, you should be beaten to death with hammers in a parking lot. Mike and on that, extreme. and on that note, um, yeah, we're done on this podcast today. Uh, but make sure to subscribe to YouTube, Twitch, Twitter, Instagram, uh, t- TikTok, TikTok, TikTok. Um, do all of that. We have some Mike's Meals for One branded content that's coming out. It'll be a lot of fun. Uh, that should be hitting next week, end of this week. We'll see. Um, and then also on top of that, make sure to donate to Jumpstart, our charity of choice. Jumpstart helps economically disadvantaged kids play teen sports, which is just so much fun and uh, something that's so important to Rachel and I. So all of the links are in the description below. If you're able to, please donate. And Rachel, I will see you on Friday.